Okay, so this is my version of KDE Plasma, which runs on Raspberry Pi OS. So this is running full Linux. And for the first time, I now have Android within it. And it runs really well. So for instance, if I do this reckless racing, so this works with keyboard. It uh, uses, for some reason, enter for accelerate and left and right. But let's just jump into a, uh, a single race. Let's go off-road and play. It's all really snappy and responsive and everything. So let's just show how that's performing. So this is Android running within Linux. <laughs> I don't know what break is. Right, now we're clear of the pack. But it is, it's responsive and it's working really well with the keyboard, really happy with that. And you can hear that the audio is absolutely fine as well. So if I wanted to quit out of that, I could drag up from the bottom somewhere and then get this. So that takes me back to the home screen. So let's try a bit of Roblox, which works with mouse and keyboard. So WASD and also the, the mouse control. So if I try, what was I playing just now? Blast Zone. And let's just jump into a game. I don't really play this, but it did seem to be working absolutely fine. So if I right click on the mouse, I can move my character around and I can jump up and down and so on. Uh, can I toggle through? Oh. Where did they come from? Let's just try that again. Right, let's get a weapon first of all. So I guess we'll go with boxing gloves. And let's try and find someone. It's a bit sensitive on the mouse control, but it's working. This person's launching stuff. Am I gonna sneak up on them? <laughs> well, that worked well. I can get a hamburger like. Oh, okay, so don't go in the water. Let's respawn. Oh, there's someone there, look. <laughs> and it is responsive and it's working and the frames seem to be pretty decent as well. Can I get in there? Where'd they go? Oh, what have they got then? Why are they so confident? <laughs> oh, weapon's gone. So this one here. How does it work? Okay, I'm gone. Anyway, you can see that works. Not sure if I press the window. No, Windows key brings up the Linux menu. And you can just skip straight back into Linux. So if you're working, you can go straight back into your work and then you can just tap on here and go straight back in. And if I drag up from the bottom, I can close down apps so I can click on the X here and I can just drag that away. You can see that one's still up and running. Play Store's still there. If I click on the Play Store uh, and install an app, so say I want to install TikTok, just click on that and that will start to install in the normal way. You can see I've got various apps on here. GTA San Andreas works, but unfortunately not with mouse and keyboard. So let's skip all this and start game. But I didn't expect the, the 3D performance to be decent because it's running Android within Linux. So running a full desktop operating system within Linux. I just didn't expect it to work anything like this. So let's just skip past all this. And so you can see I can look around and there's a little joystick down here. Yeah, so I can run around, but obviously that's not a particularly good way of playing the game. So let's put this on a touchscreen device. So this is the Raspad 3, which is a Raspberry Pi inside a tablet, a rather chunky tablet. This is a four gig Pi 5. And you can see how chunky it is. And I was running that just now from this 64 gig SD card. So obviously it'd be faster from NVMe, but let's pop that in and boot it up. So you can see Raspberry Pi OS starting up. You can see my lights, but they'll disappear when we get a proper display on here. So if I tap on here, ah, login's an issue. So I'm going to need mouse keyboard to log in. So I'll just log into that. And then I'd probably be all right to just unplug this. And we're in, so if I tap for apps and tap on Waydroid, you can see lots of apps come up. 
and you can see now I can switch between the open apps and we can go back to San Andreas and see how well it works with touch. Let's skip all that. Yeah, it is responsive and it looks great as well. So yeah, all that's working. So controller is here. I can jump on the bike and have a little ride around. So will buttons be better? Maybe. But you can see it's definitely working fine. I'm not getting any audio for some reason. I'd have to have a look at that. But yeah, I'm, I'm just really impressed with how well this is working, how good it looks. And it's really, really responsive. And I, I just thought it was going to be okay for basic games, but I didn't really expect it to be good for games like this, really quite advanced games. So let's close that down. And remember, this is the 4 gig... Pi. Uh, so I'm surprised it's running as well as it is. So let's go back to the Play Store and let's do a search for Ada 64. 64. You can see the keyboard's working fine, although something went wrong. It's because I've got no internet. And we're connected, so let's try that again. Yeah, so Ada64, install. So it's installing nice and fast. I left that in real time. There we go, so let's open that up. Installed RAM 4 gig, Raspberry Pi 5, Model B. Just so impressive. So all apps, all the settings, Switching between screens. Let's try Cut the Rope. I haven't played that on this yet. This is Cut the Rope 2. And let's just see if that's working. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. So how did I get this to work? Well, I'll show that on my 16 gig Pi. So I've used an 8 gig at the start, a 4 gig in the Raspad, and now a 16 gig Pi 5. And all of them have worked with this absolutely fine. So if I was to launch Waydroid from here, uh, and let's go straight in. Let's click on that. It starts to launch Android. So before now, I had about 98% of it working uh, from following guides and things, but there was one extra step that I didn't have. So if we do a search for a mean tech and Waydroid, this video, Run Android Apps Directly on Raspberry Pi, was the one that got me that one extra step that I needed, which I'm really appreciative of. And also thanks to Tom Turmchenbauer for letting me know about this in my emails because I had been trying this. I'd got it to work on my Chewy tablet recently, uh, which was running X64, didn't have to do any extra steps, but this needed this one extra step. And that step was in boot and firmware and command line dot text. It just needs this one little bit at the end, so a space and PSI equals one. And that PSI bit, is something called pressure stall information, which I'd never heard of. And even when I read through this, I don't really know what it is. When CPU, memory, or IO devices are contended, workloads experience latency spikes, throughput losses, and run the risk of OOM kills without an accurate measure of such contention. Obviously, you can read through that if you want to know all about it, but um, all I know is that it definitely fixed it. That and the kernel 8 fix, which is in config.txt, which I already had enabled because I'd run the PS2 emulator on here and that needs kernel equals kernel 8.image. So as soon as I'd done that extra pressure stall installation and rebooted, it worked straight away. And I had Android up and running with no issues. So I won't do a tutorial on how to do that because it's all in I mean text video, so I'll link that video in the description. But what I will show is the Play Store bit. So when you do an installation, and this I think this was one of the guides I was using, it prompts you whether you want vanilla Android, so without any Google services, or if you want Google Apps installed so you can have the Google Play Store. So the option is yours as to whether you do that. But if you install the Google Play Store, you do need to register it. Otherwise, it will just constantly come up with a pop-up saying that it's not activated. So to activate it, all you have to do is basically pop this command in to terminal. 
And then once that shows up, just copy this bit of text in. So then hit enter, and that gives you an Android ID. So just copy and paste that into the Google services. So registered device. You just copy it into here, say you're not a robot, and hit register, and it will show up at the bottom of here. And after a couple of minutes, you'll have the Google Play Store up and running. You'll sign in, and it will work. But I have got the vanilla version of Android, so I've shut this down. So this is now running from an NVMe drive in an 8 gig Pi. And the version I've got on here, if I type in Waydroid and hit enter, launches quicker because it's running from an NVMe drive and is more snappy. Don't know if it needs it for Android. Android feels really quite fast on a Pi 5, but if you want the ultimate, then run it from an NVMe drive. So this is the vanilla version, so there is no Google Play Store on here, so you don't have to register anything. I installed the Aptide Store because it's just very, very simple to install from an APK, uh, and then you can install apps from there. And I was really pleased to find Elastomania on the Aptide Store. It's on Google Play Store as well, but uh, this is a game I used to play on PC years ago. Now, unfortunately, this version doesn't tend to work without touch really. So if I go into this, you can see that I can control it uh, with the mouse, but um, it's not great. And unfortunately it doesn't work with keyboard either. But uh, yeah, it was nice to see it on there. It is such a great game. Really, really enjoyable to play. I know it looks slow and everything, but the sort of strategy with it and everything just, yeah, I played it for hours. Anyway, thanks very much to Tom Termchenbauer and also Amin Tech for basically getting me over the finish line and being able to get Android working within Linux. It's a great combination and I'm in two minds as to whether I add it as a standard thing into my version of KDE Plasma or whether I keep it simple but also sort of put instructions within the operating system on how to do it just to make it a bit easier. I haven't, I haven't worked out which way to do it yet, but uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.